biggest, best, the biggest quality, the biggest in your boring market here in the centre of Birmingham. And the 50 them lovely cherries, come on. I love the market. You ought to pay the cherries, 51. It's the jewel in the crown as far as Birmingham is concerned. Times are hard. Really hard. When they're alive, they like gold. And now they're dead, they've got to be sold. The bull ring has been here for nearly a thousand years. Without the bull ring, there could never have been a Birmingham. And with the bull ring disappears, there could never be a Birmingham that most of us would want to live in. The bull ring is Birmingham's most famous tribute to the 20th century, but it won't survive into the 21st. Its demolition starts in a couple of months. It was built in the 60s and brought the American shopping mall experience to Britain. The bull ring is huge. Inside, hundreds of small shops and one of the best fish markets in Britain. And outside, markets of a thousand stalls. The open air market selling fruit and veg and the rag and row markets selling clothes and bric-a-brac. But it's all making way for this, a high class shopping centre costing 400 million pounds. There'll be a covered shopping area and two department stores. The developers, Hammerson, so they want to attract high spenders into Birmingham. So the markets have to move somewhere else, while the 1960s face of Birmingham gets a makeover for the millennium. I think the people of Birmingham would think that uh, this is the shopping they've been waiting for for so long. This will be the final jigsaw in the regeneration of Birmingham. Every time you read something on an international scale, whether it's in an airline magazine or, or anything like that, um, there's always reference to the bullring um, because it's, it's world famous as it were, but unfortunately it's world famous for the wrong reasons. We want to make it uh, world famous for all the right reasons. This is what the new bullring will look like. The new shopping centre will be built where the old bullring shopping centre is now and there'll be a new square around St Martin's Church. This model shows all the markets are grouped together on the left-hand side of the church. The builders will move in toward the end of the year to begin pulling the bull ring down. It'll take four years. In the meantime, the market traders must find a new pitch. Traders like Carl Spiegel, who's been here for 20 years. I thank you, sir. He's worried that when the bull ring becomes an upmarket shopping centre, it may drive the traditional shoppers away and could lead to the death of the markets. The people that don't have so much money, where are they going to shop in the city centre? It would be an injustice to the people of Birmingham if they try and remove the markets from this area. Not your posh voice, is <laughs> Dr. Carl Chin has made a career out of the history of Birmingham and he believes it's the bull ring which goes to the heart of the city's heritage. There has to be a bull ring. If Birmingham is to go forward into the 21st century, we have to recognise that the bull ring has been here for nearly a thousand years. Without the bull ring, there could never have been a Birmingham. And with the bull ring disappears, there could never be a Birmingham that most of us would want to live in. It's a time of great change for everyone at the bull ring. The market traders in the rag and row markets are also on the move. The rag market's being refurbished. That'll take 12 months. So the traders have a temporary home in the old Midland Red bus station. It's not a move that pleases everyone. It's going to be hard. It's going to be extremely difficult. Where will the trade go during the 12 months period? But I'll add to that, where will our trade go once the large demolition program comes into play? It will disperse the existing trade that we ha experience at the moment because their shopping habits will change within the next two to three years. I've serviced and catered for a, a group of people that aren't that necessarily well off to go into the posh shops. They're a group of people that Birmingham has, has, has never seemed to recognise. But they are the majority and they deserve better. Birmingham City Council has to balance the traditional needs of the shoppers and the traders against the pressure to improve an area of the city 
which is long past its sell-by date. Well, the bull ring as we know it will be gone, that's perfectly true. But what will rise in its place is something that's much better, much, much better. So I think when that's happened, and when the change has taken place, people will say, oh yes, we like this better than what was there before. The first bull ring market started in the 1100s, centred around the parish church of St Martin's. Peter de Birmingham was the local lord of the manor. The tombs of his descendants lie in St. Martin's Church today, just a stone's throw from where he held the first market. In 1166, Peter de Birmingham asked the king for a royal charter to hold a market. He was short of money, and holding a market was the best way to raise some cash by charging the traders a rent. Peter de Birmingham's moated manor house still exists, well, the foundations at least. They're beneath the current rag and row market. Where we are now is the art of Brummagem. We've got St. Martin's Church over there. That was there from at least the middle of the 12th century when Birmingham first got a market charter. Peter Birmingham lived a bit further down, the lord of the manor. He didn't want to live with the rest of us. The Bullring was originally a clutter of streets. Spicel Street, where the mercers, the sellers of cloth stood. Corn treeping in front of the church, where the men and women who sold corn gathered. And then there was the bull ring, and what happened was, as a guy called Cooper who had the right to tether bulls to a ring, and they would bait them there. It was a bit of a bloodthirsty practice, because the butchers wanted the bulls baited, because it would tenderise the meat before they killed the bull. As Victorian Birmingham prospered, so did the markets, right through this century. The old market hall celebrated its centenary in the 1930s. During the war, it was partially destroyed, but still used as a market throughout the 60s. Three. Three then came the greatest change. In the 60s, the architects and developers tried to turn Birmingham into an American-style metropolis. The Bullring Shopping Centre is symbolic of the new Birmingham. There's nothing quite like it anywhere else in the world. Before the designers and planners started work on this ambitious project, a team of specialists spent several years studying the development and operation of shopping centres abroad, especially in Canada and the United States. You can stroll at ease through the shopping malls without a care in the world. Covered in, air-conditioned, no weather problems. No traffic, no noise, no dust, no fumes. And these days, hardly any shoppers. In the 60s, 22 million people came to the bullring every year. Now, that's down to 9 million. And against this backdrop, the traders like Carl Spiegel still have to make a living. Today, he's haggling with his suppliers. Nice potato, something beautiful, delightful in taste. Very cheap. Now, those aren't as brilliant as I thought they would be. And they're not bright at all. Morning, Robert! Don't give me a heart attack now to get stage bad weather. The head's very nice, it's the outside, the leaf. Right. How much? Huh? Roger, that's got some cabbage in it. Rick, brown cabbage. That is nice. Beautiful cabbage. Derek, you've got any deals going. I'm ordering a ten for a pound Pembroke, sire. I'm just waiting for one I went.